So Luca is an institutional software and data company that supports really any business that has crypto on their balance sheet. Uh, we do that with our enterprise data products that do financial reporting and data management. And we also have uh, data products that integrate into our software, but we also offer them standalone. So pricing products that are aligned to accounting guidelines and a number of other products that are very important for these businesses to actually operate and do analysis in the crypto ecosystem. Great, awesome. How does Luca support crypto funds today? So we, we uh, primarily support crypto funds through fund administrators or fund auditors who are customers of our software and or our data products, depending on what audit processes they're working on. Um, and so that's the, the predominant way. We support over 400 active crypto funds through those customers today. Um, we'll also have some of the bigger funds that will directly work with us as well uh, with uh, shadow books type of software or, or other portfolio management services. In um, starting with things like decimal place precision. So Bitcoin requires eight digits past the, the decimal place. Uh, the Ethereum protocol requires 18. Um, and there's tons of assets that are all listed on the Ethereum protocol. Um, so it starts with the infrastructure and then it turns into a number of data products that actually sort through and organize all of the crypto data uh, because we're missing things uh, from standard setters such as standard ticker symbols. Um, and so our data products will solve that before we can get to the more traditional fintech processes like tax lot matching and reconciliation and, and the final reports that we generate. Not one-to-one, -one, yeah. Our, our, on software, we really don't compete with any. We have had a couple over the years. Um, and uh, we're, we're the only provider that, that actually built our software with AICPA SOC controls. Um, so those are, it's a, an auditor comes in every single year for at least a six month period and audits our technology to make sure that it's working correctly. So then our customers don't have to, to perform that audit themselves. And so it's one, one example of what we do that's more institutional grade. On the data side, there's some traditional market data providers that are out there. So we compete a little bit, but not with our flagship products, uh, which is our reference data and our Luca Prime product. So we're seeing certain funds, obviously, that are, that are just forming or very excited about the market conditions because they get to buy in low. Uh, we see others that have just recently formed that are, that are obviously a bit more distressed. Um, but we're not seeing any less momentum in the ecosystem at all. We service a number of big uh, traditional corporations as well um, with our, our software products. And we're seeing a ton of the traditional financial institutions um, launch various different types of businesses to support crypto. Um, so none of that seems to have slowed at all, despite the market conditions. We've been working with the crypto native companies, so crypto exchanges, OTC desks, market makers, protocols, we've been working with for years. There's a lot of them out there, so yes. we definitely are actively selling to new ones. Um, however, the last 18 months, I'll say, huge wave of traditional financial institutions, traditional funds that have all gotten in, and not all of them have announced their plans yet, but there's a lot of things that are going on behind doors, particularly in the fund admin and the custody space. And then we're also seeing a lot in the brokerage space. It's exciting. Very exciting. Um, we're seeing, um, you know, a lot of things in the press. We're seeing some layoffs from certain companies. Yeah. We're seeing lots of other companies that are still actively hiring. Um, really, I think anyone that's lived through um, similar conditions in crypto before is looking at this as just an opportunity to buy. They're maybe changing their strategy. Um, they're looking for acquisition opportunities. They're looking to hire some new talents that wasn't available until recently. Uh, but we're not seeing, um, I, I have absolutely no concerns about the future of crypto and, and where it's going. I'm, I'm hoping that it, I'm sure like many others, that it depegs more materially from the traditional markets here mm -hmm. in, in a couple months or so. Um, and that we see another, uh, another nice wave. And I yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great observation. So we, so to your point, market risk doesn't affect us as much. Maybe a negotiation gets tougher with a customer. Maybe you have, you know, one of hundreds of customers go out of business, um, that type of thing. But where most of our risk is, is in the operational and the technology risk. Um, which is um, absolutely paramount that we get right so that our customers can rely on our services and the calculations and everything that we do with our products. Um, so we, we started off in the U.S. We were founded in the U.S. We just recently, um, about a month ago, launched our, our Zug office in Switzerland, which will be our European headquarters. We've also just um, about to launch our Singapore office to service uh, Asia. And so we are currently mobilizing and, and hiring 
um, all over the world so that we can uh, form a global footprint. Uh, we, we've been servicing companies and our products have been built for global businesses already. And now you're just meeting that demand. They want operational support that's in local time zones. We need relationship builders and salespeople in local time zones. And so it's mainly operations and sales that we're expanding globally. Our products, thankfully, have already been built to handle and we already have been servicing companies all over the world.